In this video, I will go over some hints to help you with uh, um, with the solution of uh, of this uh, problem. the The idea of um, of this problem is to to work with a physical system and find the potential energy of the system and using that expression to determine what are um, at what points you have equilibrium and what kind of, of equilibrium you have, whether it is um, stable or unstable. Now, the system is the following here. I have a cube that has a mass of uppercase M and this is a ball that can move up and down on this rod. The mass of the, of, of the ball is lowercase m. And from the ball, I have a, um, I have a string of length L um, where I'm, I'm hanging this uh, cube from, with, with the help of the pulley from the mass. Now, I do know, so the uppercase m, the lowercase m, those are constants. Um, as I said, the, the mass can move up and down. Um, this distance B is fixed and of course the length of the string that goes from the mass to the pulley and then back to the cube, um, the length is lowercase l, that is also a constant. Now, for a system, I am using um, the, the cube, the mass and the earth. And essentially this way I'm including um, all potential energies um, in, in this system. Now, that would be the potential energy of the system then would be the gravitational potential energy uh, between the cube and the earth and the gravitational potential energy between the mass and the earth. Of course, here I am neglecting the gravitational potential energy between the cube and the mass just because that is going to be so much smaller um, not not important at all compared to those two gravitational potential energies. Now the way to calculate those I have mgy and I have chosen the origin to be here and the positive x is to the right and the positive y is up. Now according to this coordinate system mgy for the potential energies will give me mg minus h because this is h and mg minus the lowercase h for the mass. Now, um, it, it seems that here I have two variables, but if I do a little bit of trigonometry, I can make this, um, I, I can make this depend on one variable. I can see from the from the triangle, okay, for um, for the lowercase h, if I use this triangle, I have b and I have the angle theta, and I can say the tangent of theta is b the opposite over the adjacent, b over h, and then solving for h, I can get b over the tangent of theta. So then this the second term will be mg minus b tangent theta. Now, for the first term, I have mg minus h. Now, as I said, this the whole thing is L. So, h will be L minus the hypotenuse of this triangle. And I can write the hypotenuse um, as b over the sine of theta. So, then um, I have minus L plus b over sine theta. And this way now, if you take a look at this expression, m is a constant, g is a constant, l is a constant, b is a constant, theta is, um, is one variable that will change as the two masses move up and down. Constant, 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 again theta. So even though I started with two variables, those two actually do depend on each other and using trigonometry, you can write the gravitational potential energy of the system um, uh, simply expressed using one variable. So now I can say that I have this is the potential energy of the system as a function of theta. 
Now, the problem is asking us to find the equilibrium points. Now, what do we mean by equilibrium? Equilibrium is defined at the points where you have a net force of zero. And we know that the net force can be calculated as, let's say, the vector net force is minus the gradient of the potential energy of the system. Now, here, um, okay, so this is how I define equilibrium. Now, um, the gradient um, is essentially in, in, in the case where the potential energy only depends on one variable will simply be d let me erase that it's not the partial derivative it's gonna be d d e p of the system over d theta that should be zero so if i want the net force to be zero then the derivative of the potential energy with respect to theta needs to be zero. Of course, the minus does not really make um, any significant difference. And this is going to tell you, once you use this condition, you will find the values of the angle theta at which, at which points you have equilibrium. So this will be your... The solution for theta will be your equilibrium points. Now, um, we also want to find what kind of equilibrium we have. And what do I mean with that? I'm going to do a graph to show you. Uh, actually, I'm going to do two graphs. Oh, nope. So, all right, if, if this is what your potential energy looks like, then of course your gradient or your, your derivative will be zero here. Now, if this is what your um, potential energy looks like, then we need to somehow determine it, determine that this is a stable equilibrium point. If on the other hand, your potential energy looks like this, then the point where your, where equilibrium takes place is here. But this is what, this is what we define as unstable equilibrium. And what you can do so to find the points of equilibrium, we set the first derivative to zero. Then to determine whether it is stable or unstable, what I want you to do is to find the second derivative of this expression with respect to theta. Okay, And when you find the second derivative, say if you found, um, if you found a single solution, a single equilibrium point, then once you have your second derivative, take that value and plug it into here and the sign of the derivative whether it is positive or negative will determine will tell you whether you have stable or unstable equilibrium okay but don't forget first you have to find the second derivative and when you have the expression for the second derivative, then take that value and plug it into here to see whether you get a positive or a negative sign. If you have more than one equilibrium point, then you have to try, you have to do this for all of them. You have to determine the stability for all equilibrium points, whether it is a stable or unstable equilibrium.